Hey everybody, welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation, you'll never regret it. So, hit subscribe right now, and without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Clayton Kershaw, who is finally back from being injured. He, of course, had his nasty slider, and my favorite, his Cooperstown curveballs. Here are a couple back-to-back. He gave up two runs in four innings, but frankly, it was just great to see him back on the mound. Adam Wainwright had this absolutely painted backdoor sinker. And here's a good overlay of his elevated fastball and my favorite pitch from Wainwright, his curveball. And you can see how that elevated fastball and curveball work. That tunneling is another way to get hitters out without having dominant velocity. Now, a pitcher with dominant velocity, Zach Wheeler, was in action. And he dominated a lineup with fastballs and curveballs. He had eight strikeouts, giving up only two hits, no walks, and no runs in six innings. His ERA on the season, 2.84. So he's come a long way from the start of the year. His ERA was well over nine in mid April. Lucas Giolito didn't have his strongest outing, but he did have these wicked sliders and struck out eight. Kevin Gosman also didn't have his greatest outing, but did have these nasty splitters, as usual. I love featuring Gosman splitters. Nick Martinez had nine strikeouts in five and two-thirds innings, giving up only one run, and I love these curveballs from Martinez. Filthy. Jordan Montgomery is another guy with a filthy curveball, and pretty underrated. Opponents are only hitting 102 against this curveball with a 46% whiff rate. He went seven scoreless innings with five Ks, and had these nasty curveballs and change-ups. He now has a 2-7 ERA this year. Since we're talking curveballs, we might as well talk Charlie Morton, who also pitched yesterday. Morton had a great curveball-fastball mix working, and his curveballs, well, they were over 3,200 RPMs. He had 23 swings and misses this game, and struck out 12 hitters in only 6 innings. Now, he did give up 4 runs, but in Pitching Ninja World, that doesn't matter. Strikeouts are way more important than runs, and Morton had a lot of them. Interestingly, since the crackdown on foreign substances, Morton has more than double the 3,000 RPM pitches of anybody in baseball. This game also featured one of the worst out calls you will ever see. Look at this play. This was originally ruled out on the field. I don't know what he was looking at. If you've always been anti-replay, this is the poster child for replay. They did get the call correct in the end. As far as plays in the field, Zach Plezak proved that pitchers are indeed athletes. Look at this play, especially the throw. Totally off balance, falling backwards. Just an amazing play. My filthiest pitcher yesterday, that was Hunter Green. Hunter Green topped out at 101.7 miles an hour. Had seven Ks in five innings, giving up only two hits. But my favorite pitch of his was his slider, and he threw a ton of them. He actually threw way more sliders than he did fastballs this game. Despite being able to touch 101.7 this game, he threw 57 sliders and only 37 fastballs, and it kept hitters off balance all day. These sliders are disgusting. And by throwing more off-speed pitches, it made his fastball that much more dominant. You know earlier in the season, his fastball was getting hit a little bit. Well, your fastball looks a lot faster when the hitter's seeing a ton of sliders. It's so much fun watching a pitcher figure it out. Hunter Green's always had elite stuff, but the key to getting major league hitters out is how you mix that elite stuff. And it's so cool to watch Hunter Green figure it out on the fly. Another interesting thing about Green's outing, his fastball during the first three innings averaged 98 miles an hour, and his fastball over the last three innings averaged 99.7 miles an hour. So he was getting stronger as the game was getting longer. One other thing I like about Green is he's really into visualization and the mental game. Here you can see him visiting a mound just to get a feel of what it would be like out there so he's not surprised the first time he gets out there in a game. It helps him calm his mind and visualize his pitches. Pitching is a hugely mental game. Another thing he does, when he visits a stadium, he always seeks out the highest seat in the stadium before he pitches 
just to calm himself and get away from everything and to get a view of the stadium and take it all in. In college baseball, Connor Nolan was dominant with this filthy stuff for Arkansas. Chase Dolander had this 98-mile-an-hour painted fastball and skipping K-Strut. And speaking of K-Struts, I love this shout-out I got during the Texas A&M-Louisville game where you got a great K-Strut, you have to page pitching ninja. Struck him out. Paging the ninja. It's a K-Strut from Dallas. I love it. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Joan Duran had a 101-mile-an-hour fastball. Eli Morgan had this Bugs Bunny changeup, and I did an overlay of his changeup and fastball. You can see why this would give hitters a hard time. Opponents are only hitting 091 against his changeup. Kyle Crick had this wicked 3100 RPM slider and a fist pump. Camilo Duvall had a whole crave case of sliders, basically a double White Castle special. Check these out. And Diego Castillo had this wicked sinker. He's also amazingly fidgety on the mound, basically pitching's version of Nomar Garcia Parra. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. I never knew Teddy Roosevelt was a complete dickhead. Dramatic running of the president's race. Look at this, Teddy with the shove of Abe. Abe going face down into the dirt, and Teddy would finish that one off. Dramatic running here at Nationals Park.